Hello, welcome to Vet Med Corner. I'm Dr. M. Today we're going to cover what's needed to get into veterinary school and whether or not I recommend considering it. Join me, you'll learn something. So to get into vet school, we need to start preparing for this all the way back in high school. And that means having absolutely excellent grades in high school. And generally you should take as many science and AP science classes as is possible. Once you graduate from high school, you do need to be accepted into a relatively good university or college that has undergraduate bachelor degrees available and you'll need to very carefully be looking at what the prerequisites are for the vet schools that you are interested in. You should always apply to more than one vet school and you should be choosing your undergraduate degree based on what courses you know overlap between those two things. So as a result people often end up choosing biology degrees sometimes animal science degrees. Um, my actual undergraduate degree was biochemistry and molecular biology. You know, there are a variety of options that can fit, but you need to pick one that will cover as many admission requirements for as many veterinary colleges as is possible. And you also need to be choosing a program that's going to offer you a successful, you know, backup option career, because the fact of the matter is that getting into to vet school is incredibly competitive and that not everybody is going to make it. And so that was part of the reason I chose my undergraduate degree to be biochem and molecular biology. Um, my backup plan was medical school because it's less competitive to get into medical school simply because there are more schools and therefore more seats available for med school. And I knew that when I was applying to undergraduate programs. So making sure that you have a good backup plan is also very important at this part of the application process. While you are in your undergraduate program, you also need to be volunteering for your community or working for your community somehow. You also need to be working in the world of veterinary medicine somehow, and ideally you would have both companion animal and large animal, equine, farm, you know, whatever experience. Personally, um, I worked at an egg laying farm. I also worked in a companion animal and exotics vet clinic. And I also have family that have a dairy farm. So I also had dairy farm experience. Plus in uh, undergraduate, I did some horse starting for some people. So I was very active in all of those different sections of veterinary medicine which helped to make my application stronger. I also did have hobbies outside of all of this because they're looking for balanced uh, individuals. And so my hobbies included playing the piano. Um, I also was in Toastmasters, which is a speech giving uh, program. I also volunteered for a soup kitchen that made soup and sandwiches to give to people who are suffering from homelessness. You need to have an excellent GPA in your undergraduate while you are also doing everything outside of school. This is an incredibly heavy burden to take on and it is exhausting. So all the while you're in your undergraduate degree, you are making sure that you are checking off those prerequisite courses for your vet school application. Then eventually you will get to the point where you have finished enough of the prerequisites that you can start to apply to vet school. Now, some vet schools may still need you to complete the GRE or the MCAT before you apply. Some schools don't anymore. Um, you also must be having a bunch of very strong letters of recommendation from a number of people. It's usually around three letters of recommendation. So you need to be building relationships with people who are going to be willing and able to write you those excellent letters. Now it is expected and normal at this point that you will end up applying to veterinary school uh, more than once. 
um, if that happens to you, you know, I wouldn't be shocked. It happens to many people. And so it's important that you have a bit of a backup plan here. A lot of people do end up pursuing a master's degree or they end up working in sort of a, a research uh, sort of a setting that can add some more strength to their application and it will you know really depend on case by case what will be best for you um, you can often ask the school hey what was weak on my application why didn't i get in what can i work on for next year if you do get offered a seat to vet school you will need to pass a background check you will also need to prove that you have a number of different vaccines uh, for like rabies vaccine and Tdap, a bunch of others. Um, and you will also need to have a TB test before you are allowed to go into the class. Then once you are in vet school, you have to survive uh, four years of it. And the program that I attended, there was a summer break between first and second year as well as second and third year. But then after you finished your third year of classes, you had no break and you immediately went into 12 full months of clinical rotations. And that was an incredibly intensive year. During that clinical year, you are also concurrently studying for the NAVLI because everybody in North America needs to pass the NAVLI. And then once you have passed that and you know where you are going to practice, you will also have to pass state or provincial uh, licensing tests. And so there are a number of things to do if you can make it through the four years of vet school and not everybody does. Our class did lose some people. And then there are also some people who end up not passing the NAVLI on their first try, sometimes even on their second try. And looking up the statistics of how well the vet school prepares people for the NAVLI is something to really consider when you're looking at where you should apply. You should also be looking at the caseload that the vet school clinic is offering. Um, you want more caseload because that exposes you as a student to more diseases and to more specialists. So I made sure that I was going to a program that had a cardiologist and an ophthalmologist and an anesthesiologist and a whole bunch of these incredibly well-known specialists who are writing the textbooks for vet med because I really wanted an excellent program to set me up to be successful you know to the best of their and my ability so the next question becomes do I recommend that you apply to vet school and at this point in good conscience I don't I mean you know, just realistically speaking, uh, the average debt for vet med students was around $200,000. And the appropriate debt to income ratio that's recommended is at most one to one. And yet the average salary for veterinarians is less than $100,000 per year. And this just makes vet med as a career untenable because you cannot pay down your student debt and you won't get approved for things like mortgages or car loans. You can't afford to take holidays. You can't maintain a proper work-life balance because if you work less, you can't afford to eat. Um, and this is the realistic side of vet med that people who are considering going into it need to know about. Man, it's just awful. And when you compare this to how medical students graduate, they graduate with maybe a bit more debt. On average, it was about $242,000. However, the average salary is over $300,000 per year. And so the debt to income ratio is appropriate and that makes it possible to live once you have graduated and start practicing. I cannot say that for veterinary medicine. It isn't possible to keep going like this and the lack of support and the immense pressures make it a profession that has a lot of trouble. And it's for that reason I struggle to recommend to people to go into veterinary medicine. The only case I would consider it is if you come from a wealthy family and you would end up graduating with no debt. The sacrifice is so great and I don't think that students understand that when they're looking into veterinary medicine as a career. I wish I could say otherwise because 
being a veterinarian is so much of who I am that I hate to say this to people, but in good conscience, I cannot recommend that you go through vet school. Not how it is today. Anyway, I hope that you found this information helpful and that it helps you to understand what people go through to graduate as a veterinary medical doctor or as a doctor of veterinary medicine in North America. I post a new video most Fridays, so I'll see you in the next one. Bye!